I'm going to very controversially say that, for all intents and purposes, if you are a communist, you have to support Russia. The only extent to which Russia is now fighting in Ukraine is to the extent that it is communist. Now, we know Russia isn't ruled by a communist party. We know communist ideology is not official in Russia. But Russia is the ultimate litmus test of whether or not you take what we call materialism to its logical conclusion. A socialist mode of production is not just defined by whether or not socialist ideology is officially in power. A socialist mode of production also entails materially socialist relations of production. These are not details about the formalities of statehood or the formalities of law or the formalities of which ideology is in power, but just a qualitatively different mode of production. The idea that you can somehow revert back to capitalism from socialism is just as much of absurdity as the idea that you can revert back to feudalism from capitalism. Because the basic laws of history are this. A mode of production is not reversible. You cannot regress from a socialist mode of production to a capitalist one. It is, from a materialist perspective, not possible. The real basis of the mode of production that exists specifically within Russia is all a relic of the communist past. There is there is no such thing as Russian modernity without the socialist paradigm of communism. And they have never moved past that, even under Putin. You still have a profusely state-controlled economy. And to the extent that it's not state-owned and state-controlled, it's downstream from that. You also have an economy that was fundamentally intertwined with Western finance capital. We're not talking about Russia transitioning back into a capitalist mode of production. We're talking about a geopolitical power held by the West over Russia since the dissolution of the USSR. Foreign capitalists from the West came into Russia and colonized it. They colonized the Russian economy and looted the Russian economy without fundamentally changing or altering the basic infrastructure or relations of production that existed in the Soviet era. The veneer of a, of a capitalistic economy is there, but the oil industry, for example, is a top-down, centrally planned economy, state-owned segment of the economy. The side of Russia's economy that's private, aka open to the colonialism of the West, is exactly that which is diminishing because of the special military operation in Ukraine. Russia does not have a very strong financial capitalist class. To the extent that it does, it's one that's disloyal to Putin and more loyal to the second British Empire, which is the network of City of London offshore banking. When Russia abandoned communism, all they did was abandon the line of development of Russian modernity. Russia stopped developing as a modern economy. The Putin era has just been characterized by this homeostasis of stability and just stability. Russia's future has to be communist in some sense. If it's not communist, it's going to be something more advanced than communism itself. I have seen no evidence that any post-communist country can pick off from its previous mode of development, succeed that, and go forward in a non-communist way. The Eastern European countries that are former communist countries experience severe brain drain, migrants just fleeing the country, a demographic crisis. The basic meat and potatoes of their economy is very neglected, and they've opened the doors to foreign financial colonialism, and they're not really developing their own economies. That is true for almost all the ex communist states. Communism is not just a matter of what ideology is in charge, it's a matter of the ability for these non-European, non-Western civilizations to be able to participate in any modern industrial development. Communism was the prerequisite of that capability. Now, the second largest political party in Russia and the largest opposition party period is the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. Zayuganov is already saying we need to look toward China to redeem and kind of re-examine our Marxism-Leninism and return to communism while also correcting the mistakes of the past. Zayuganov and the Communist Party of the Russian Federation are at the vanguard of Russia's intervention into the Donbass against NATO, against the West, and in support of those people in the Donbass. You're knocking on an open door when you say communists are not in power in Russia, because what Russia really needs are people who can critique the shortcomings of late Soviet communism, while at the same time staying true to the basic continuity of progress that began in the Soviet Union. When you say Russia is not communist, you're basically saying Russia has not made peace with its past. Russia has not picked up where the Soviet Union left off in terms of development. Any future of Russian economic development will entail some kind of reconciliation with the socialist or communist past 
which means continuing the development that started with the Soviet Union. And that is not reversible. There's no way you can regress back into capitalism. Historical progress is, if it's real progress, is something objective and irreversible. And when I say return to communism, I just basically mean this. Return to what worked. Improve on what didn't work. The Soviet Union had a lot of issues. And Soviet-style communism had a lot of problems and had a lot of issues. But it also formed the basic foundation and premises of modern Russia as we know it. Russia, civilizationally, infrastructurally, in terms of its base economy, has not fundamentally deviated from the Soviet era. Submitting to Western geopolitics at your economic level is not the same as developing your own capitalist mode of production. To the extent that Russia is capitalist is to the extent that it has given grants and concessions to foreign financial institutions. Now, I know there are a lot of orthodox LARPers and czarist LARPers, especially ones that live in the West, who think that Putin is the next czar and Russia is returning to its pre-revolutionary state. But that's not true. There's nothing about Russia that bears the markings of pre-revolutionary Russia. You just take for granted how much the Soviet Union fundamentally and irreversibly changed Russian civilization. The Tsarist era was characterized by a handful of Germanized and Westernized aristocrats and nobles lording over over 90% of a country of just completely illiterate, irrelevant people. That does not characterize today's Russia. Today's Russia is in a sense democratic because it includes huge portions of the Russian population having some kind of political subjectivity, having some kind of modern way of life and stake in the system. That wasn't true for the Tsarist era of Russia. The Tsarist era of Russia was pretty much a form of Western colonialism on over 90% of the population in all functional intents and purposes. What Russia is struggling with right now is a way to basically make sense of its own reality without just having to revert to the very flawed Soviet dogmatic form of Marxism-Leninism. If you want to say Russia got colonized by the West again, it's kind of a stretch because the structure of that is very different, but the special military operation was at to the detriment of that. The SMO is something that Putin did for the Russian people. He did it because if he didn't act, he would have no political future. Ukraine was planning on going into the Donbass. For 10 years, Putin and the Russian ruling circles were trying to find some peaceful solution that would avoid any direct conflict by Russia, similar to what they did in Crimea, and it didn't work. They had to do it, very reluctantly so. They were not doing this enthusiastically. And, I mean, maybe Kadyrov was, maybe elements in Russia were. The Russian ruling class class didn't want to intervene in the Donbass at all. Even Putin didn't want to intervene. He just wanted to maintain stability. Russia is not an expansionist power. That expansionism cannot be explained in a materialist way because its mode of production and its economy, which is based on the revenues that are coming from the oil industry, hinge upon stability. Stability in oil prices, stability in the flow of oil, and stability in revenues. Radical and drastic changes to that upset the basis of the Russian ruling class, if you can correctly describe one in the first place. But if there is a Russian ruling class that is clearly intelligible, it is one that would be disturbed by any kind of expansionism. Right now, what you're seeing with the special military operation is that Russian history is outpacing the, the Russian ruling party and the Russian ruling status quo. This is exactly the type of opportunity that Russian communists have been predicting for a long time now. Indigenously speaking, communism in Russia means double, tripling down on the SMO. So it's very simple. If you are a communist, you have an obligation to support Russia. 